Hello friends! I'm about to do a video about a topic that not many people have ever done before. At least on this site anyway. Long before I became a minor success on YouTube, I kinda did sprite mods for a game called Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto 1, you know, the original game with 2D top down sprites made in like the late 90s and things. Look, look, CDs and shit. Like many people who played Grand Theft Auto 1 in the late 90s, early 2000s, I was also in love with the whole sandbox, freedom of movement, do whatever the fuck you want nature of this game. Okay, that's enough of the introduction. Now, allow me to introduce you to an old program vital to anybody who's ever modded Grand Theft Auto 1 before. This is GTA Cars. Created by some dude named Jeff Matthews and Fifth Engineering, this program was a must for the many artists who did sprite mods from Grand Theft Auto 1. And this video will show you some of the basics for how this program works. First, before we start, you obviously need a copy of J GTA 1 for the PC. Next, you can find a copy of GTA Cars. Oh my fucking god, the site still exists. I mean, uh, wow. Well, this is this. This brings me back. Uh, this site has not changed in over 20 years. That's awesome. <laughs> mm, simple 1990s website aesthetics. Anyways, let's get modding. Now, first things first. This program allows you to edit vehicles and sprites in Grand Theft Auto One. The files themselves are in the GTA data directory. They will be labeled 001 to 003. Each of them based on the three major areas in Grand Theft Auto 1. The G24 file extension is for the 16-bit tile set of the level, whereas the GRY represents the 8-bit tile set for the exact same stage. This program is a must for anybody who is even remotely interested in making sprite car mods for a game that is over 20 years old. So this program allows you to see all the sprites in the game, including some unused ones. Now, this program also has a secondary feature in that it allows you to edit the building and wall textures of the exact same map file. As a graphical artist, this gives lots of potential for creative freedom. Now, before we start doing anything with this program, let's go over something important. Be sure to back up your shit. Make separate backup copies of whatever side projects that you're planning on uploading onto here. Make some backups of the original style G24 files, just in case as well. So now, anyways, when we begin, uh, you might notice that all the sprites have specific numbers that are in quote-unquote pages, which load up rather quickly because it's since it's not Windows 98 anymore. Don't worry about those or the sprite numbers, it just points out to where the sprite is located in the file in the editor. However, when you click on the sprite uh, that you wish to, like, mod, the thing you need to look out for is the file name which, if you wish to import or export graphics, is found in the same folder as the GTA Cars program. Now again, back up your things. Put things in different folders if you have to. Most programs will ask if something will be overwritten in the GTA Cars folder. This program replaces indiscriminately. Don't want you to lose your stuff. Anyways, let's get to the basics of the whole importing, exporting sprite car things. First you need a 2D sprite car. For this you can either attempt to make one yourself and test out your artistry skills, or you can download one of these mods from one of the many many GTA modding sites that might no longer exist because it's been like 15 years. Oh hey, Hippie Tiff's GTA Shrine is still up despite not being updated since 2003. Now let's take a look at one of the many many bi- Oh thank fuck, I don't have to look at my older mods. But that's okay. Because you can get real creative when creating a sprite mod for Grand Theft Auto 1. Now, for example, let's say for some reason you want to use graphics from, say, Action 52 for the Genesis because I'm a fucking maniac. You can do that. Just simply screen crop it into a bitmap file and give it the appropriate file name. And let's go into a side project that I abandoned many, many years ago and have it replace that Camaro thing that went horribly wrong. In this case, this atrocity is represented by car 1O. So with the replacement graphic with the same name and the same target folder, we can upload it and... Oh yeah, this is where the tricky part comes in. GTA Cars is very particular when it comes to actually importing stuff. The imported file needs to be a 8-bit, 256 color bitmap image. Even though this is technically a 16-bit tile set, it still requires 256... 256 color bitmaps. No exceptions. 
Now, you might want to avoid using MS Paint when converting a 16-bit bitmap image to a 256 color one, because as you can kind of see, MS Paint kind of fucking sucks at converting bitmaps. I mean, how the fuck do you make something from Action 52 look even more shit? This is where you might need a third-party paint program like Photoshop or Paint Shop Pro. See, the way things work is MS Paint has this habit of converting a color palette to 8-bit using parts of every fucking color, including colors that aren't included in the fucking vehicle, whereas programs like PSP and Photoshop can actually recognize the colors in an image and do things like properly convert a RGB color palette from 16-bit to 256 color to correspond to a specific area of a color palette, allowing you to create a 256 color bitmap image without fucking up the colors too much, thus allowing you to import the, import the Sprite and GTA cars. Wow, that's a lot of techno babble. I gotta like breathe once in a while. So, now that that's out of the way and the bitmap is at uh, 256 colors, uh, let's upload this thing. Oh yeah, GTA cars is uh, really particular when it comes to file sizes and stuff. Each graphic has to be of a specific size of X by Y pixels. It's, you, you'll get used to seeing this message a lot. This can be easily fixed by going back into MS Paint or whatever paint program you have and adjusting the sprite accordingly to specific dimensions. GTA Cars is really particular about this, so be prepared to spend a lot of time adjusting the file sizes to make it the exact dimensions. This attempt should be successful now that we've adjusted the dimensions by a quarter of a centimeter. I gotta get better recording software. Now you can save and the vehicle should appear when you play GTA 1. Now keep in mind that if you are making a vehicle from scratch, you might need to make a bunch of damage and door graphics, since in this case I just uploaded a single image. First you need to export what is called a blank delta set. What the fuck is a delta set you might ask? Well, a delta set is a term given to the crash graphics of a certain vehicle in the game. Let's just take an example of a basic vehicle that doesn't look like complete shit. Now, this is your basic delta set for a sprite mod made for Grand Theft Auto 1. I can't believe I made this 15 years ago, that is surreal. Anyways, starting from the top left, looking at the frames, first frames of the vehicle in its normal undamaged state that you'll see in the game, followed by frames of damaged graphics and sectors set in a specific pattern, and it has to be in a specific pattern every single time. Followed by four frames of for the door opening animations, followed by what is called a free space, which is a dummy frame that doesn't appear at any point in the game. Here you can do whatever you want, put some signatures, do whatever, just stay inside the lines. Now some delta sets may vary depending on certain vehicles in the game. Some vehicles have extra frames for their delta sets if they have multiple doors or if they're emergency vehicles. The monster bug from the San Andreas tile set has an extra frame for its unique and barely visible wheel animation. Some vehicles like the tank, helicopter, and boat have no delta sets, despite also being drivable vehicles in the game. Now, every sprite that has ever been imported or exported in GTA Cars has a certain file name. Wow, I made this back in 2005. Oh my fucking god, something I made in the past still holds up after all these years? Ah! That's awesome! In this example, the C represents the clean delta that you need to upload and accidentally overwrite if you're not careful. The 2 means that this vehicle is part of the San Andreas tile set represented by the appropriate style G24 file, and 76 is the specific vehicle number corresponding to the game's .fxt file. The 8-bit style GRY tile sets also use the exact same file names as the G24 files to, ex to import or export mods, but in that case that would be an 8-bit tile set which would make the quality even lower. Now, it is possible to convert a vehicle to another file and tile set, but you just gotta keep in mind that this game is real fickable about file dimensions, so take your time and adjust accordingly. Now, there's two types of delta sets to export in GTA cars. There's a clean and a dirty version of the deltas. See, there is a difference between the two. Uh, the clean delta set exports a blank set of frames in their original state, whereas a dirty delta set is exported with the crash graphics intact. Anyways, so, 
Going back to this horrible Action 52 example, in this case we just uploaded the car file only, which would still have the same deltas as the vehicle sprite that I just overwritten. So in this case, you'd have to export the clean delta set, and, you know, this is where the graphics work comes in. I'll be right back. Now for this joke car that I deliberately made for this video, I put a bunch of skeletons in the Delta set representing where the crash graphics have to be in certain sectors of the vehicle. And the door animations, um... Yes, I went with skeletons. I could have easily, you know, remade one of the crap vehicles from Action 52 and blow the failures of other people out of the fucking water. But, eh, I'm just lazy, so I'm just gonna copy-paste a bunch of skeletons instead. Now we can upload the C car replacement. Don't worry about this mess here. This is just for you to check out if there's any transparency issues in the vehicle. As long as you're not using the default black color in MS Paint to do the interior of your car, you should be fine. Since black is the normal default transparency color in GTA cars. And yeah, that's about it for the basics of uploading vehicle. All you need to do is save and play the game. Thankfully, Grand Theft Auto 1 is a DOS game, so it should work with my recording software. Oh, for fuck's sakes, not again! This is, okay, this is probably due to the complications of running a DOS game that has to be run with a CD-ROM and later versions of Windows, but seriously now, we're doing this again? We're going back to not recognizing files that are in the fucking directory? Fine, whatever. <laughs> I have other methods of recording stuff. Uh, why can't programs from the 90s work properly on later versions of Windows? You'd think they'd be backwards compatible at this point. Anyways, mind the camcorder footage. The recording f software tends to have a hissy fit when it's not a windowed application. So, the game is gonna stop. Oh my god, this is going splendidly! Uh, aside from all the technical problems, here's the joke car from Action 52 working in Grand Theft Auto 1. It's perfectly functional since it's just a sprite swap of a pre-existing vehicle. Oh my god, I just made something from Action 52 work. And it's working in Grand Theft Auto 1. What the hell is wrong with me? Heh. <laughs> Stop skeletons from fighting. Now GTA Cars can do more than just upload or import a vehicle into the game. It can do all sorts of stuff with the program. Like tweak physics and other technical stuff. Which I'll get to shortly. Yar, Space Lobster! Now, while GTA cars can do more than just import or export sprites and textures, it can also edit the physics of a certain vehicle. Now, the first thing that you want to do is adjust the color of your vehicle, because as you can kind of notice, when you override a vehicle, the remap still think it's the original car and it kind of looks fucking ugly. But this can be easily adjusted. This program has the option to change the colors to your liking using various color, brightness, saturating, saturation settings, saturation. What was wrong with me today? Why can't I speak properly? Yeah, you, there's a lot of, like, paint settings that you can use to customize your vehicle. What palettes are available may, de may vary depending on what type of vehicle you have. Some sprites have limited palette sets. Some, like vans, buses, and emergency vehicles have no palettes. And whereas others have the full amount saved for the one that's usually the default setting. Those are the resprays for ya. Oh, and for the record, yes, you can also edit the sprites for GTA London 1969, which, even though it might be a standalone game mod for GTA 1, its graphics file also has the same style G24 as the OG Grand Theft Auto 1, i.e. the first area, style 001. So yes, you can also edit this in GTA Cars. Now there's two types of remaps, respray and random. For this example, I will make, say, the resprays of this vehicle various shades of pink and purple, and the random resprays of this exact same vehicle as eh, every color but. Now in this case, the random resprays will apply to the randomly generated vehicles that spawn on the highway tiles in the game, whereas the respray, they only apply to vehicles that are deliberately programmed in the mission on any file. In this example, the exact same car when taken to the respray shop is changed to the respray color since, you know, it's the initial vehicle that's programmed into to appear via the mission on any file. Now, only the mission vehicles can change color when taken to the respray shops for some reason in this game. Vehicles that were placed in the map file via map editors like M1 or Junction 25 do not change color, despite it being the exact same model. Yes, I know, it's weird, but that's how the game works. Now that that's out of the way, let's go explain some physics and shit. 
First, the Sprite tab. First four options just give basic info of what the vehicle is. Don't worry about it too much. Yeah, the model name here is one of the few options that's actually in the registered version. Here you can just rename your vehicle to whatever you like. It's pretty convenient if you don't have to if you don't have like a fixed editor or dot to edit dot fxt where these names are. But don't worry about that too much. The width and the height is interesting because it represents like the hitbox of your vehicle. In this case, let's deliberately make the hitbox all tiny and use it to our advantage. Ah, the glories of creative freedom. Could you please move your ass, you fat fuck? Now, depth is a simple mechanic. Setting uh, the number to something low like 10 means that the character slides over the vehicle. Whereas setting the number like, say, high like, say, 24 means that the character slides under the vehicle. It's as, as simple as that. Now, the convertible flag is determined by a simple number. Zero is for vehicles that have a roof. One is for convertibles, which will have the sprite appear on the vehicle while driving. And two is normally used for emergency vehicles. Although, this also serves as a secondary purpose because, yes, you can, in fact, make vehicles that animate. Normally, this is used by the monster bug in the San Andreas Tile set, but you can use this to apply to any other vehicle that have an extended delta set. Now, let's take, for example, this half-assed thing that I made in like five minutes in MS Paint. Yeah, the animation frame that you'll want to use to animate is the first of the secondary door frames. Just set the uh, convertible flag to two and the end result is kind of choppy since it only has just two frames of animation but it's really cool just to see stuff like this made possible with the, with the editor. As for the doors, surprisingly the door tab is one of the few things that's only available in the registered version of GTA Cars. This is nothing special, it just allows you to alter the location of where you enter a vehicle. It's just another cool aesthetic thing that you can do within the program. Now for the Specs tab, yeah, this gives off some basic information. Uh, as far as I know, the top six things here don't really do much except really give information. If you really want to adjust the physics of like acceleration and stuff and physics, you'd have to go to the next tab in order to do that. The damageable here, though, is like the HP counter for the vehicle which means that the higher the number means that it can take X amount of damage before it blows up. At least that's what it's supposed to do. The value is simple. You have a value of X and you take it to a crane in mint condition and you get X times a thousand. However, this does not work for emergency vehicles, by the way, or the essential cars programmed in the mission.ini file, so keep that in mind. As for the physics tab, um, I like to recommend that you don't touch any of the values that affect the handling too much unless you really, really know what you're doing, i.e. the CG momentum, the tire retention, and all that. Seriously, like a hundredth of a decimal place is the difference between like stuff working and the game crashing, so just leave these alone unless you really, really know what you're doing. Now the mass is one of the things that I can understand. Unlike in the previous tab, this is the place where you type in the value for the weight of the vehicle. Don't say it too high or too low, you'll be just fine. The momentum kind of ties into this, like in the same way that vehicles need a set distance in order to stop when going at light speed. I don't really change this stat that much because it's, you know, the momentum is another uh, one of those really fickle things that makes the game explode if you change it by like a thousandth. So I just leave it alone. Now the thrust value is the thing that affects the car's speed and acceleration. Adjusting to, you know, the mass of the vehicle and that. A thrust value of 15 is what you get for some of the more faster sports cars in the game. Don't go too high, though, because not only would it make the game really unstable and explode, and, you know, running into too much stuff makes the car explode, so keep the speed reasonable. Now, I recommend not touching anything within the steering and brake tabs unless you want to experiment. I mean, modifying a hundredth of a decimal point in any of these values risks making the game really, really unstable and explode. And finally, the sound tab. Here I know I can actually edit things safely without the game exploding on me. Yeah. The engine sound is where you can make the basic engine noises for the vehicle. Here you can get creative because at one point, the program will allow you to make weird engine noises with sound effects from the actual game file. In-game, anyway. Just imagine an engine based off various sound effects from the game. The radio sound is, not only determines what 
the convertible sound usually makes, it also determines the pre-selected radio station from the game's soundtrack on the CD-ROM. The horn is just, well, it's a fucking horn, which the values correspond with the pitch of the same horn sound, and as you can kind of hear, the pitch for the horn just keeps getting higher and higher. <laughs> Except for emergency vehicles, which of course the value is 127. Yo, check out this mixtape. Yeah, that's right. Higher values actually include sound effects in the game, like police chatter right here. I don't really know why the sound effects repeat themselves twice like the Roadrunner cartoon, but I'm... <laughs> Okay, now that I've discovered the game's fart button, the sound function and fast change flag. Um, I can't remember what the fuck these two things do, but from what I remember, it just determines whether or not you can cycle between the three preset radio stations on a specific vehicle and its radio sound. Don't worry too much about these. And yeah, that's about it for the basic functionality of GTA Cars, the program that can edit stuff for Grand Theft Auto 1. You know, given as how YouTube has gotten millions of users now, and how every single fucking video about Grand Theft Auto modding is about GTA 5, you know, the very thought of me making a video about modding the very first game in the series seems like a fucking anomaly. Fortunately, GTA Cars is one of the few relics of GTA modding that survived after like 15, 20 years. There were some other vital programs that were used back in the day to mod GTA 1, I'm just gonna start naming them off the top of my head like some sort of fucking lunatic. Do these programs even still exist? Yes? No? Maybe so? I, I don't fucking know. But that's a tale for another time. Anyways, I got other shit to do. Thanks for watching. Ah! That's awesome!